testing out, and then, of course, as they took the field to go through their paces, they realized that they would have to face game number three without the likes of Mike Piazza in the starting lineup. They'll have to win it without their star catcher, Ray Ordonez in the cage. But the Mets say they are confident and they are excited to be here. The last two weeks have felt like playoff games every game, but uh, I, I am excited. I'm excited uh, a lot for the city because I think the, the Met fans are really excited about it, and um, we as players are because this is a stepping stone for us to get to the World Series, and that's ultimately where we want to be. The last day was unbelievable, the way the fans, you know, kicked in and uh, kept us energized. I mean, I think I know the New York fans are, are supposed to be the best, so they're going to be uh, out there and ready to go, and hopefully they can uh, – Put a little bit of intimidation and fear into the other team and uh, and keep us energized like they did the last series. I'm looking for that first pitch. I'm looking to see uh, our fans enjoying uh, the atmosphere, and I'm, I'm sure they will. It's been a long time coming. I mean, you're talking about 11 years, and um, to, to have the, the fans come back um, after this uh, long stretch is, is going to be fun. And, um, you know, we've, we've felt it the last uh, couple of days here in the season how they uh, kind of got us going, but uh, it's going to be totally different with the playoff atmosphere. I think we're pretty fired up, and we got a taste of that this uh, Sunday game against the Pirates, um, just the way the fans are really into it every pitch, and uh, I, I believe it's only going to raise uh, up of probably another five levels, decimals, when we get out there Friday night. And I'm joined now by Mets General Manager Steve Phillips. Well, we certainly didn't expect to walk on the field, look up at the scoreboard, and see batting seventh, number seven, Todd Pratt. A big surprise to all of us. Well, it is. And, uh, you know, Mike has the injury. Uh, he's, he's been really playing with it for about the last 10 days or so. And uh, he had an injection in there to try to settle things down. Unfortunately, we can't get the inflammation out right now. So we're hopeful to get Mike back tomorrow. And we were confident Todd Pratt's going to do the job tonight. Well, not to get too medical because neither of us are doctors, but it did strike me a bit reaction to the quarter zone shot and that that is extremely rare so it brings up the question was that the proper course of treatment well i think mike's uh, comments yesterday to the training staff or after the series in arizona was that that he couldn't hold the bat swinging so they thought they're kind of cuffed in a rock and a hard place and thought the injection might do him some good so uh right now they're trying like heck to get that inflammation out of there and and uh, we're confident we have mike back tomorrow so you do Number think he'll be in action tomorrow we're, we're pretty confident he will be yes well, Steve, what does this do to the club? It's not as if Pedro Martinez goes down. You saw how that affected Boston. How do you think this will affect the Mets? Well, I don't think it'll affect us as much as it might give the Diamondbacks a little bit of a boost, knowing Mike's not in the lineup. We've played very well with Todd Pratt in the lineup all year. He catches and throws extremely well, and he gives us a spark at times behind the plate. So we're, we're a little bit lesser, but Tank's going to give us his best effort, no question about it. Can you give us a sense from your organization standpoint what this means to the franchise to have a home playoff game for the first time in so long? Well, it means everything for us. I mean, I, I think that we've started to gain some credibility back again, and I think this really takes us to that next level of credibility, both from the ownership perspective and, and the rest of the organization. So we're proud of this team to get us there. We're proud of our fans. The Dodgers and Dan, it's going to be a great and exciting weekend. Okay. Thanks, Steve Phillips. Appreciate you joining us. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Right. Now, let's uh, shift gears and talk about the Yankees for a second because their general manager and staff went out and got themselves Roger Clemens, and he's the man. You know, obviously, everybody will pick up their, their, their slack, and uh, with Todd Pratt behind home plate, he's, he's a heck of a catcher. Um, I've had some of my best games with him behind there. As a matter of fact, my most dominant game this year with 15 strikeouts and seven innings in Chicago. So uh, he's going to do a great job back there, and who knows? Maybe this is something that just... You know, get everybody uh, thinking that, uh, you know, we don't have the big guy in there and everybody pull up their load. You're on tomorrow. Rick's on tonight. The electricity in Shea Stadium should be off the hook. Absolutely, and uh, we hope it is because uh, I think the uh, the home field advantage in Arizona was pretty loud and they got behind it, especially yesterday with the uh, their Diamondbacks on Wednesday. So we're feeling it. I know that these fans, they want it. They're, they're uh, frustrated. They're happy and all the emotions, and hopefully they'll get on the uh, Diamondbacks enough to rattle them a little bit. With or without Mike Piazza in the lineup, these fans are pumped up for their first playoff game in 11 years. Let's go back to Len as the starting lineups are being introduced. Len? Well, that latest roar was for Roger Cedeno. This roar is for Masato Yoshi. Al Leiter introduced to the crowd behind me. Pat Mahomes. Bobby Bonilla. Number 26, 
pitcher, Billy Taylor. Number 27, pitcher, Dennis Cook. Number 28, pitcher, Bobby Jones. Number 29, pitcher, Octavio Dotel. Number 31, catcher, Mike Piazza. And, of course, one of the biggest roars from Mike Piazza. You see his left thumb. It is immobilized with what appears to be that soft cast. And as you heard Steve Phillips tell me a few moments ago, they hope and they are optimistic that Piazza can take the field tomorrow in game number four. All right, John Franco just introduced. We'll take a break. We have a lot more coming up from Shea Stadium on Glory Days. We'll be back, everybody, in just a moment. And welcome back to Shea Stadium. The Mets hope to do what the Yankees did last night. Let's go to Bruce Beck in Texas for a wrap-up of the Yankees' big win at the stadium last night. Len, how do you explain the Texas Rangers? The America via satellite. Tonight, Providence, Dateline, and Cold Feet will not be seen, but will return after baseball. Now, the National League Division Series on NBC. It can come from out of nowhere Hit you when you're safe and warm Take it easy, my star Your time is gonna come Your time is gonna come The time for Edgardo Alfonso was game one he launched himself into the spotlight by launching a game-winning Grand Slam. Game two belonged to the Diamondbacks. Todd Stottlemyre's pitching performance, coupled with Steve Finley's five RBIs, has Arizona even in the series and in a positive state of mind. Whose star will be the next to shine in this series? As the pressure mounts, and as the Mets and Diamondbacks point themselves toward baseball's ultimate prize. Game three, next. Sun America NBC pregame show. The 1999 National League Division Series. Tonight, it's game three. The Arizona Diamondbacks versus the New York Mets. A cool but pleasant night in Queens. 60 degrees as game three approaches. And as fans arrive at Shea for the first postseason action in this ballpark in 11 years. The first since the 1980 LCS between their Mets and the Los Angeles Dodgers. The series, of course, even at a game apiece. New York will go with veteran right-hander Rick Reed. He was 11-5 this year. Arizona counters with left-hander Omar Dahl, who won 16 while losing 9. Welcome to Shea Stadium, everybody. With Joe Morgan, I'm Bob Costas. First item of business, Mike Piazza will not start tonight for the Mets and likely is unavailable even as a pinch hitter. The troublesome left thumb, which has been bothering him for some time now, has finally forced him to the sidelines. Moments ago, our Jim Gray spoke with Piazza. All right, thank you very much, Bob. I'm now joined by Mike Piazza. He went to the doctor yesterday, had an X-ray. Negative on the X-ray. He was given a cortisone shot, and his thumb is swollen up. What is the condition of your thumb exactly, Mike? Well, it's still pretty swollen right now, and um, just taking it hour by hour. I'm going to go in right now and just continue to ice it throughout the game, and um, you know, hopefully it'll feel a lot better later on. Um, but you can't catch and you can't grip the bat, so no, officially I, tonight you probably won't play? Really couldn't bend it, you know, up until this point. So it's, um, you know, obviously it's pretty serious right now, and I just hope that it's... Uh, from what the doctors told me and the trainers told me, it should be feeling better pretty quickly. I'm on some uh, very strong anti-inflammatories right now, and it, it swelling should come down. Once it does, I, I should get some mobilization back in my thumb. Quickly, is it actually the thumb, or is it an allergic reaction to the medicine? Yeah, I think it was probably both. I mean, um, you know, I, I was able to play with it. It was very painful, but, uh, you know, they, the reaction was very rare, and uh, it wasn't predicted that it would happen. Obviously, it did, and, um, you know, we're just dealing with it right now. All right, Mike, we hope you feel better. Thank you. Still questionable for tomorrow, Bob. Back upstairs to you. A 
Okay, Jim, thanks. Todd Pratt starts in Piazza's place tonight. A real roller coaster ride the last few weeks for New York. It wasn't long ago that you were saying they were baseball's best team. Well, that was before the Atlanta massacre, Bob, but they have had a real roller coaster ride. I felt they were the best at the time because they have speed at the top of the order featuring Ricky Henderson. They have RBI men in the middle, and they have the best defense in all of baseball. They also have an excellent bullpen, and what has happened to today's game now is that the bullpen has become more important than the starters, and I still think they have a very outstanding chance to go all the way. Now, as for Arizona, an expansion team in just its second year of existence, winners of 65 in year one, improving that by 35 victories to an even 100 in 1999. But, of course, with free agency and the revenues available to expansion teams these days, being an expansion team doesn't mean what it used to mean. Well, this is a definitely a different expansion team, Bob. Fifteen of the players on this roster have postseason experience with other teams, and they did it by both free agency and trades. Matt Williams, Luis Gonzalez, Matt Manti, and Tony Womack came by trade. So they have put together a very fine ball club and it's experience, too. Okay, Mike Piazza out. Rick Reed and Omar Dahl on the mound. We'll have the lineups and the first pitch of Game 3 from Shea Stadium in New York when we come back after this. This has been the Sun America NBC pregame show. Sun America, the retirement specialist.